Um, the next item on the agenda is the uh, hearings panel report to the Council uh, on the uh, Te Waiora Otane Draft Integrated Water. No, it's not. Sorry, my apologies. I've just opened it up at the wrong page. It is the Action for Healthy Waterways consultation, uh, which helpfully um, closes its submissions on Friday, the 17th of October. This is another one of these. Um, uh, more than unfortunate timetables that we we are operating to, um, and uh, yes. So, um, Yanni, you, you, you no, you're not the chair of this one. You, um, Diane, would you like to um, to speak to this unfortunate timetable that we have been forced to meet? Thank you. Uh, and I'll be um, pretty brief. Um, basically, the Ministry for the Environment is consulting on a suite of proposals to improve freshwater management. Um, there are several that they've provided some substantive detail on, um, changes to the current national policy statement on freshwater management. Um, they're proposing a new national environmental standard for freshwater, and they're also proposing new stock exclusion. Uh, regulations. Um, there's also um, several other proposals for which they've provided less detail. Um, they've de they're described in their discussion document, but the draft wording of what they're proposing to do, such as um, bills or regulations, um, aren't part of this current consultation. So they're talking about amending um, a current water take regulation, which is the measurement and reporting of water takes. Um, they're proposing a new national environmental standard for wastewater discharges and overflows. Um, they're proposing a new Water Services Act. Um, they're also proposing amendments to an existing um, NES for so sources of human drinking water. And they're also um, talking about um, making some amendments to the Resource Management Act. Again, those five um, proposals are not provided in huge details in their discussion document. Um, they have indicated that they are going to be doing further consultation on those five proposals sometime next year. Um, they've graciously extended the consultation period from October 17th to October 31st. That's helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't really help us no. any. Um, <laughs> or so, any other d local council, I might say. Yeah. Yeah. So if um, the council would like a submission on the ministry's proposals to be a council submission, um, that would need to be signed by Friday, October 11th. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a crunch. Um, the report that you have in front of you is um, requesting that, that you delegate to um, the mayor and a small number of um, your colleagues to um, basically form a submissions panel to work with, with staff to get a submission to be signed by the mayor no later than October 11th. And I, I apologize for the mistake in the report. It says Friday, October 10th. Obviously, it should be October 11th. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I, I kind of originally sort of had um, a provision for it to roll over afterwards, but um, would it be possible to make the submission or sign off the submission by October the 11th, uh, but also uh, acknowledge that, um, that with the election, an incoming council may wish to provide additional uh, advice? Um, I might defer that to our legal folks, but I don't, on the face of it, I don't see why we couldn't put that in the submission. Yeah. I, I agree. You can put that note in the submission if you like. Yeah. I, I think that would be important because then, then we know that we've got a submission signed off by the council uh, by delegation in the meantime. Uh, but then it does provide the opportunity for an incoming council to review that uh, relatively quickly. And assuming that the 31st of October um, is uh, a possibility in that regard, then there will be meetings of the new council 
um, prior to the close off date. Yep, thank you. Uh, Vicky? I just have a question in relation to the nitrogen loss um, thing, which is on page 455. Um, a new national bottom line for nitrogen, and then uh, the nitrogen loss is also referred to. Is that covered in this Act, or is that in a future Act? Um, that's part of what they're proposing in um, the new National Environmental Standard for fresh water. So right. there's there's several things that are in that NES, um, and one of them has to do with um, basically with farm activities um, right. and nitrogen losses. So so it is covered to some extent in in the NES for which. Um, the ministry has not only um, addressed elements in their discussion document, but they, al they also include, as part of the consultation, a draft of that NES. Right. So should we make comments on that in this submission or in a future one? Um, well, the, the way um, staff are working right now, we're be we'll be looking at everything that right. they're um, proposing, okay. but in particular, we're um, certainly looking most closely at the, um, the draft documents, so the draft national policy statement for freshwater management that's going to be amended, um, the NES and also the stock exclusion um, regulations. So those in particular, but all of the discussion document. Right, and I assume, sorry, um, that it doesn't lower the MAV, MAV for the maximum allowable um, quantity for nitrates in source water. Um, well, the um, this is where it gets really confusing. Yeah, um, it's the drinking water. The, the NPS, the National Policy Statement for Freshwater Management, um, is um, in some respects more, a more direct link to um, water quality, but it's it's focused on surface water. Um, there's really nothing in the NPS that talks about groundwater. So in terms of groundwater, no. Um, However, in the discussion document, they talk about, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, <coughs> proposal to amend another existing um, national environmental standard, and this is for um, human drinking water sources. So in that, they explicitly mention um, strengthening that NES to deal with specific contaminants, and they mention nitrates by name. Um, and because that NES is about sources of drinking water, it applies to both surface water and groundwater. Um, however, they haven't provided um, a draft of what those changes might look like. So all we can do is say, we, if we do, we can say that we think that's a good idea and then wait for, the, um, for a consultation to come out specific to that NES sometime next year. So sometime next year, mm. just to carry this forward in relation to Plan Change 7 that ECAN's got underway, if they go with their current um, and operate on the current um, nitrate levels and what they're projecting them to become, that <coughs> may change in legislation or don't we know? Uh, we territory? don't know. So at this point they haven't indicated whether they might set, for example, the equivalent in the NPS of a, like a national bottom line, so we don't know what that's going to look like. And so we don't know what effect that might have um, on Plan Change 7 or on the Land and Water Regional Plan as a whole. Um, we'll just have to wait and see what it looks like. Okay, thanks, Dave. Yeah, and just following on from that, because I'm actually quite concerned about the, um, this, this kind of seemingly multiple layers that all come back to the uh, drinking water standard. and. Um, I finally got a reply from the Minister of Health uh, just, um, I think, yesterday or the day before, and uh, just, um, I just really don't think that there is a, 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 an understanding of the level of seriousness it is that there isn't a, um, a sort of a, a, a matching study done in New Zealand, for example, uh, to either refute or add mm. weight to the Denmark study. You know, I'm just, I'm really worried at the situation that we're in at the moment, because um, it f kind of feels like that all of these things are being, uh, are being uh, discussed, but there isn't the one thing that draws all these threads together around the source water protection for our drinking Absolutely. water supply. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I think there needs to be some reference to to the different layers of work that's going on because, I mean, essentially the reply says that, um, you know, guess what? The um, MAV of nitrate, uh, we, we've set it at exactly the same level as the World Health Organization, but that's the problem. If the World Health Organization are basing it um, on uh, on the pre-existing view of the science and not um, seeing that the precautionary approach is actually appropriate at this time, um, I, I'm just I'm, I, I really despair as to how we get to the point where this is taken um, as seriously as it should be. I mean, there, there are there are elements of understanding in terms of the research that needs to be done, but I really don't think that they get that it's so important that we get that population study to be a comparison with what happened in Denmark. Mm. Yep. Uh, Pauline and uh, well, I totally Yanni agree. and Phil. I think we need to keep banging on about that, but what I um, take from this is it's basically, and tell me if I'm wrong, but it's basically about surface water. And, and, and I know you have referenced um, the NNES for sources of drinking water, and it would be fair to say that most of New Zealand's drinking water is from surface water. Mm. Therefore, we need to actually um, make ourselves in Canterbury as a point of difference, and whilst at the same time connecting the surface water with our underground aquifers, because we know there's transference. So I, I think, yep. is that fair to say? That's correct. Um, that is. They they do mention in the discussion document where um, regional councils are looking at um, managing um, catchments. Um, they do talk about that linkage between, um, or potential linkage between groundwater and surface water, and that the regional councils might want to consider including groundwater in their catchment plans. But um, that's as far as it goes within that discussion document. Yeah. So whether that ends up being um, any kind of a change to other other instruments, it's hard to say at this point. I think point. it's really worth a comment from us that we would like it to be seen that way, and um, and that we um, we would rather take a risk averse approach to nitrates in our nitrate levels in our source drinking water. Uh, while the future evidence is being accumulated, because let's face it, we're pretty risk averse and everything else, so why shouldn't we be in this? So I think that, um, to me, the feeling I get from this is it's about surface water, and I think we need to uh, strengthen that connection between surface water and groundwater. A lot of our um, surface water is spring fed from below, and when that gets contaminated, our surface water gets contaminated. I'd be happy to be on any working group, by the way, if we yep. set one up. Uh, Yanni? Yeah, I just want to be really clear that this does not have any relation to our water supply. Um, we have more than one water supply um, across the the whole of Christchurch. Do you mean the Christchurch drinking but, water supply? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I understand the protection of the source water for our drinking water, but e.g. the nitrate issue. What I'm unclear about is whether there's anything in here that's going to make it harder for us um, to have uh, chlorine-free or residual disinfectant-free water. Um, I think they're different um, issues. Not that I'm aware of, but um, I, ha I do have to say that because um, what the Ministry are pro is proposing is um, so complex and covers so many different things, um, we're still <coughs> working through the implications of what they're proposing right. and, okay. and it seems like almost every day somebody will discover something new okay. in the discussion document. But I don't, yeah. I don't think so. It's, it's not necessarily explicit to um, so our drinking water. One of the things I heard on Radio New Zealand, I think from someone who had been on the panel that put these reforms together, was that the cost for urban authorities would also be incredibly significant. And he thought that the challenge for urban authorities, people weren't quite aware of the cost impact. Um, and that seemed to suggest to me that this actually will be about, um, and if you look at the proposal supporting the delivery of safe drinking water, through amending the National Environment Standard for Sources of human drinking water. Uh, well, they're again. It's they're 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 basically t 
talking about all of all of the waters bar to to, to some extent groundwater. Um, so they are talking about um, stormwater and having stormwater risk management plans. Um, that would be covered presumably in this Water Services Act, which we don't know what that looks like because they haven't provided that yet. Um, they're also talking about, again, a, a national environmental standard for wastewater and wastewater, uh, sorry, wastewater overflows and discharges. Okay. Um, so there, there are definitely things in here that could be so, um, quite sorry, substantial just, for the council. Just in terms of informing the submission, could, could we go back to uh, the Ministry for the Environment and ask specifically about is there anything that they're proposing that will impact on our ability to provide residual uh, to provide residual disinfectant free water through our network um, and the second question I had was in regards to our integrated catchment plans um, particularly because we've gone through the global stormwater discharge consent and now have a process underway to look at those what how does this relate to the work that we would do either currently on those or possibly we will have to do differently in the future. I'm just, I'm just mindful of the issue that we've had with the chlorination where we can spend all this money and all this effort on a process and then the goalposts change and we're back to you know, square one. But so, we're not back to square one. I mean, um, you know, sorry, I'm, I'm, we, no, but it's unhelpful. Okay. To, I'll withdraw that. Uh, just in of, terms of understanding the timing around yeah, but global Yeah, mischaracterising what, what the process that we're in there. Okay. The Sorry, last I'll, item I'll on this that. says the proposals do not address groundwater except in an indirect peripheral way. There are no proposals to place any limitations on contaminants in groundwater. Staff consider that the inclusion of groundwater in the MPSFM is long overdue. And I think that's been reinforced by what other councillors have said, and it's actually being reinforced by what you've said. Right. I think the, the, the area that you've heard on the radio um, is, is the uh, increased cost or the significance of the cost around storm wastewater water and, wastewater. and stormwater, right. but also okay. around um, uh, the wastewater discharges and overflow. Right. So thanks for clarifying and we already that. Know that so, but we already know yeah. that they are issues and we know that there are issues because of our global um, consent discussions. That's right. So what I was trying yeah. to understand in terms of are we better to put a proce that process on hold until this is finalised so that we're spending our money wisely around what the new standards are rather than continue down the path of trying to meet the current standards which could change. But that you're mixing up two different issues. I mean, stormwater and wastewater. That's part of our global stormwater oh, I discharge see. Right. consent. Stormwater. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think it would be good to not do anything until the government comes yeah. out with their um, two things, the, the NES for wastewater overflows and discharges on the one hand, and also the Water Services Act, which um, then would potentially have requirements around um, stormwater. Um, whether or not we would have to do something more than what we're doing now is we don't know. Um, it's it's quite possible that what we're doing right now in terms of the stormwater management plans would meet the requirements that they might um, put on the stormwater networks um, under these other um, instruments. But we don't we don't know the details yet. But we're obliged to act anyway because we're yeah. in a consent process. Yeah. So um, I've, I've got uh, Phil, I think Anne, did you have a question? No, and uh, Vicky. Thanks, Diane. Perhaps in some ways it's a pity we aren't dealing with the integrated water strategy one today too, to sort of try and get them joined up, mm -hmm. but we're going to do that Thursday. Um, I just wanted to, just going back to um, the point that Vicky raised around um, nitrogen as bottom, national bottom lines, and then there's also reference to that for phosphorus and sediment too. Yeah. So when we do our submission, Will we, um, while this is around surface water, will we be referring clearly to what we would like to see happen in the catchment areas to, pre to prevent the oil, so these net bottom lines are achieved? Um, we, yes, we will be. Uh, it is our intention to make submissions on those um, proposed new national bottom lines. Um, again, um, what's proposed in the national policy statement is um, directed at surface water and mm. not yeah. groundwater. Um, but 
we know that things work both ways. Um, surface water can obviously influence groundwater and vice versa. Particularly long term. Mm. Mm. Okay, so we'll we'll be commenting on that on on on, what, on possible solutions and ways to achieve that. I'm not sure how much we would be putting that into a submission um, given the time frame that we have, but we'll do our best. Okay, thanks, Diane. Good, um, Vicky. Just looking at the diagram, sorry, and attachment A, where they list, list all the things that they're going to do, including protect drinking water sources. Um, I'm assuming that's the thing that's going to come later and is not included in this. What I'm wondering, just in terms of time and the impact of uh, dairy farming or other intensive farming on the Christchurch water source, we have a report coming, or you have a report coming to um, the Council in November on the possible action on a water conservation order, is that right? Um, that's my understanding, unless something yeah. changes. Yeah, so in November the new Council will get a report on what would need to happen about a possible water conservation order and it may well be that that's the quicker even though they take an incredibly long time way to look at protecting the groundwater source for our aquifer um, actually in the first instance I would say that the um, um, the amendment to potentially the amendment to the existing uh, national environmental standard would be faster. Would be right. um, the water conservation order process is um, not a fast process at all. And last I looked, they still hadn't um, finalized the, the water conservation order on Poo Springs. So, yeah. Okay, so this might be faster than that, but you'd probably want to do both. Might be. It's hard to say because we don't know exactly what it's going to look like in, in terms of what it might achieve. So. We'll just have to wait and see. And the letter that you just got from the Minister of Health doesn't give you a lot of help, hope. No, I can't say that I was inspired by it. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was being polite. Yep. Right, are there any other questions? Now, um, how do you want to um, resolve the uh, signing off on this? Um, um, Pauline's indicated that she'd like to be one of the named councillors. Is there anyone else? Phil, Phil Clearwater? Is that, are people comfortable? Uh, and Sarah Davidson. Oh, sorry! Uh, <laughs> that was, sorry. Sarah Templeton, sorry. I just looked over that direction. You were sitting next to Mike. And I it's just all right, Mrs. Speak. Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault. Sorry, I do apologise. Um, so, and um, so, councillors Cotter, Clearwater, and Templeton, uh, to enable it to be finalised prior to the election, submitted um, uh, prior <coughs> to uh, submitted by Friday, the seventeenth of October, twenty nineteen. Um, uh, do, can, can we note in there that the incoming council may wish to add? No, it, it, we'll just put it in the submission. So we'll note in the submission that um, that the that the incoming council. I mean, if the incoming council does add something, then we'll add that. It would have to be submitted by the thirty-first anyway. Yes. But if it's if it's not submitted till the seventeenth, there will be there well there won't be a meeting before the seventeenth, will there? No. Okay. All right. So um, yeah. Okay. Well, that that's fine. All right. Um, so uh, would someone like to move that? That isn't one of the named people. Um, Vicky moved, seconded by Aaron Kewan. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thanks very much, Diane. It's